So Gamla stan means the old city in Swedish, which is what it is. It's the old part of Stockholm. What used to be the entire city, it is the Stockholm, which means Log Island. The name is said to have come from an ancient story where a guy who, on this island, supposedly produced the largest shit that Sweden had ever seen. At least that's one telling of the story. Another, perhaps a bit more well-known one, is that some people in Birka, which is an older historic village west of Stockholm, got a bit fed up with it being a bit crowded. They wanted to leave, so the gods, pets on Ofindus, told them to put a bunch of gold in a log and have it float out on the water, and wherever it drifted ashore, that would be the location for the new town these people would settle. And the log supposedly drifted ashore right here by this white tower behind me, if you can see that. Where is the tower? <laughs> Norse mythology is weird. I don't know, to me the story of the gigantic turd makes more sense than this one. Whatever log it was, the one from the village, Birka, or the one from the ancient Anus, ever since it hit this island, people have lived here. For a long time, as I mentioned, this was the entire town of Stockholm. There were bridges going north and south, but the area which today is Södermalm, for instance, which I've also made a video about, by the way, that whole island used to be just farmland, the countryside, you know. Gamla Stan back then was just Stan, I suppose. It was very much a standard Nordic settlement, sort of what you can expect from pre-medieval times, you know. Wooden buildings, lots of merchants selling mead and kexkoklad, polar bears everywhere and so on. There's an old rune stone still on Gamla Stan from this period uh, that you can still see today, but it's not perhaps where you would expect to find it, like on top of a hill or in a square or something. It's built into the wall of one of these 18th century buildings. It's believed to be about 1000 years old and the text on it reads something like Torsten and Frögun had this stone erected after their son who did quite well in both maths and gender studies. Why the hell someone decided to use the rune stone as building material is beyond even the wisest of Swedes. Back in the medieval period, the area was quite different from what it looks like today. There were pretty much only wooden buildings and there were not quite as many Asian tourists around. Most of these burned down though and were replaced by the sexy stone structures you see today, most of them being built around the 17th and 18th centuries. The palace, for instance, didn't used to look like this. This boring brownish shoebox takes up a huge chunk of the island and looks a bit shit, really, if you ask me. It's even more frustrating when you realize that the palace used to look more like this. Tre kronorna castle, ja herre jävlar. Ta mig till havet och pilla på min pung, liksom. Sadly, this too burnt down. Snoppar. As I mentioned, there were not many Asian tourists here during the Middle Ages, but there were a shit ton of Germans. So many, in fact, that about half the people who lived here at one time spoke German. No wonder then that there's a church called Tyska Kyrkan, or the German church here. There were just so many Germans, they had to congregate somewhere, I suppose. One of the most famous historical events that ever happened here, and one that every school kid in Sweden loves to read about, is the Stockholm bloodbath. Swedish kids love this shit. Back in the year 1520, about 90 people in the Swedish aristocracy, together with their servants, who no one of course ever mentions, <laughs> were executed by the Danish douchebag king who had recently been made king of Sweden as well. This was done after a jolly feast as well, where they all drank and partied together, apparently. Very reminiscent of the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. The executions happened here on Stortorget, and supposedly the sheer number of beheadings made blood run all through these cobblestone streets. No wonder then that the Swedish call the Danish king responsible for this Christian Tyrannen, or Christian the fuckface. The Danish, however, refer to the same king quite differently as Christian the Based. As the city grew and more and more Starbucks and Lidl popped up, more and more of the surrounding islands and landscape got populated, and Gamla Stan became more and more of the historic old town in Stockholm. The houses built outside were more modern and better insulated, so most fancy folk left Gamla Stan in favor of Normal. Of course, as soon as the rich people left, the state stopped caring about trying to make the area nice to live in, and it soon turned, as anthropologists call it, 
slummy as all shit. Rents dropped and poor people moved in in droves. My ancestors on my dad's side used to live here in this period and my great great grandmother or someone used to scrape and eat chalk from the walls of these houses during her many pregnancies, which is a craving among some pregnant women with mineral deficiency. It's called geophagia apparently and it's quite well documented. You didn't think you'd learn that when you clicked on this video, did you? Anyway, it's a bit surprising to imagine how this area, which is now considered one of the nicest areas to live, right in the center of Stockholm, used to be a real shithole. Because today everyone wants to live here. At least I do, goodness. I wouldn't even mind the hordes of tourists that flock here every day all throughout the year. Because yes, this is by far the most touristy area of the city today. You will not make it 10 meters here without having to squeeze through a sweaty group of German, Japanese or American people following a little flag around. And I mean, it makes sense. There are a bunch of tourist attractions here. There's the disappointing castle, there's this really quite narrow alley, famous for being really quite narrow. There's Vestelonggatan, which is filled to the fucking brim with Krimskrams butiker, or souvenir shops. These are perfect for those of you looking for presents for your loved ones back home, or if you'd like to dress looking like a real authentic Swedish person. Vestelonggatan is also where you'll find my favorite bit of Gamlastan, squeezed in between souvenir shops, overpriced cafes, and really fucking expensive restaurants, is Science Fiction Bokhanden, the sci-fi bookstore. I used to go here as a kid to buy Warhammer figurines and Japanese hentai. If you visit Stockholm and you're into anything nerdy at all, I would for sure recommend going here. So if you ever visit Gamla Stan, here are a couple of more recommendations for things you can do to sort of round off this video. Because of all the tourists, restaurants and cafes here are very expensive. There's one place though that isn't that insane if you want to grab a quick fika, and it's right on Storetorget. You know, the bloodbath square, which is what I think it should have been renamed, you know. It's called Grilska Huset. Up until very recently, it used to be owned by a non-profit organization, but it's changed owner now, so I can't really tell if the prices are still as low as they used to be. Uh, <laughs> but you can go here and, you know, reminisce, I guess, even if you've never been here before. Great recommendation. It's very nice though. Times Square is worth a visit as well. It's always a bit crowded, but for a good reason, I feel. Then there's a couple of really cool pubs in Gamlastan with sort of interesting themes, like Sjette Tunnan, the sixth barrel housed in the dungeons beneath the island. I don't know how old these tunnels are, but I'm sure they're older than me, so you know, I'm impressed. It's a bit expensive, as you can imagine, but at least you get an experience that you really can't get anywhere else in Stockholm, really. You can imagine you're a Viking or something. All right. So there we go, that's all you need to know about Gamla Stan. It's a very nice place, I do recommend it. Even though it is very touristy, it is for a reason, you know, it's very pretty. It's definitely the prettiest area in general of Stockholm. So thank you very much for watching the video. As always, leave a like and comments and stuff and subscribe if you want more, you know, videos like this one. Oh yeah, join the Discord and shit and Twitch. There's links to everything in the description and stuff as well. 